Oh boy, we've got a problem. Turns out the grommets I bought aren't worth 10 cents. Thankfully, there are a few alternatives on the market. So this leads me to think we should do some testing and see what the best grommet is that's out there so that I can fix this problem, go away from my irrigation system, and know it's not going to explode. If you like this video, please do hit the little red button down there to subscribe. Doesn't cost a cent, really helps out the channel. You've got no idea how much. Now, let's get into testing these grommets. So I went and saw the guys down at Century Rain because I've got a history of using grommets quite successfully. But the grommets I've used in the past have a groove in them that sits in the pipe and then your adapter plugs into that grommet and it's quite a firm fit. Well, it turns out you can still get these, but they are out of stock. They did, however, have four different options. So here's what I did. First option was to replace the little grommets that didn't work with the proper grooved grommet, which they did have in stock. So I did that. Not really successful. Next option, and this is the one they recommended, was an adapter with barbs on it. So even if it did come a little bit loose, it would not get past the grommet. This adapter though, still just had quite a loose fit in the grommet. So that was no good. Next option, I got a T-tape adapter. Now the T-tape adapter is not designed for the upright risers. However, you are able, if you heat them up with hot water, to get them to fit on over the top. This sleeve then screws up over, over your riser. And pleasingly, this is quite a firm fit into your grooved grommet. These folks did not burst or come out for a whole two weeks. So the good news is, these connectors have now held for about two weeks. I kind of feel like I'm getting out of a bad relationship with grommets, because even though this one worked, I just don't feel I can trust it anymore. So I went down and saw the folks at Century Rain. And what they suggested I solve this problem once and for all with is this saddle clamp. Now this saddle clamp is an interesting one. It undoes. There's a washer in here that goes around the 16 mil hole in the sub main that I screwed in. And it clamps around the pipe, done up tight with this little nut. And then we simply screw in our 13 mil riser adapter with some white poly tape. That should not burst. If that bursts, I give up. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously clean up our pipe because we don't want any mud or grit particularly around the hole but I like to make sure that the whole pipe is reasonably clean um, so I'm going to put in probably a bit more effort than some people do so I'm going to make sure that there's no little dags left around the hole and this surface here is nice and clean for bedding of the o-ring once I'm satisfied that that's a clean surface I simply put the clamp around the pipe and then I have to adjust it so that the hole is exactly square with my o-ring. If my hole's off a bit off center, the whole thing's gonna leak. Once I've done that, simply screw up my nut and bolt. So now all we have to do is wind our Teflon tape onto our adapter, screw that into the saddle adapter, and Bob's your uncle, we should be right. Leak free irrigation, here we come. Next thing is to connect up the irrigation again, and I'm going all out, I'm using metal clips instead of the plastic ones to hold my risers on inside the ground. I just don't want anything to go wrong anymore. The, uh, the irrigation system is not something you play around with. 
that's rock solid now that's not going anywhere and in fact I'm so confident I'm going to bury it now before I even turn it on now all I have to do is repeat that on every row problem should be solved now that we've got all of the saddle clamps installed all I have to do now is turn on the water for a few seconds flush out the sub main screw the end back on and we're all set in the meantime we've got a timer to attach so we don't have to go out of the house and turn a tap on every day to irrigate the vineyard an electronic timer for the vineyard let's go over to the bore pump open up the packet see what's in there and fit it now I'm choosing to put this timer in where all of my manifolds are that come from my bore pump and the house water and everything. So all my plumbing's in the one place. There is an argument for putting a controller like this right next to the vineyard, um, because you know it's timing the vineyard, so I have the controller with the vineyard. But my personal preference is to have all my plumbing in one place. It makes access and it makes maintenance a lot easier. My other preference is to keep the line passive, so it's not permanently pressurized. That reduces the amount of areas where you can get faults and problems, the number of joints that are stressed, the number of blowouts that you have. I just like having everything in one place. There's arguments for and against. I'd be keen to hear what you have to say in the comments, but at the moment, I've got the one line going to the vineyard, and I'm going to put the controller at the manifold where everything's all together and it's protected. So what's in the box? It's kind of cool when you get new stuff. Then we've got our solenoid valve. That's a one inch valve. So that'll fit nicely onto my one inch ball valve. I've got my electronic controller, the beautiful little screen there, all protected in behind this cover. And this bit here screws into the solenoid like so. We'll put a little bit of Teflon tape on there so that, that doesn't get water in it. And then, ah, instructions. All right, let's get started in fitting. Let's start out by undoing it. You ever noticed that things are always easier to pull apart than they were to put together? Make sure you check your flow direction. Don't install your solenoid backwards. It's at this point that I like to test it and make sure there's no leaks. Now we install the solenoid controller. Now that we've got it all installed, we've got to make sure that there are no leaks, so I turn it on. If your solenoid valve runs at the start, just screw in your manual override, turn it off, then screw your manual override back out again and it should remain in the off position. At that point, your electronic controller is going to take over the operation of the solenoid. The installation was actually pretty painless. All there was left to do now was cut the upright pipe to the right length and reassemble the manifold. All we have to do now is put the batteries into the controller and see how we go. It's at this moment that my first frustration with this timer came out. When you install the batteries, and it takes two 9 volt batteries, one as a backup and one as the operational battery, it becomes really clearly apparent that this was not an area that the engineers spent a lot of time designing. The batteries are clunky in the way that they fit into the chamber, and there's a really good chance that if you're not careful, you can actually pinch the wires as you put the batteries in. 
The interface on this controller is outstanding. Obviously, this is a multiple zone controller. You can set it up to uh, operate many different valves and you can even connect them via Wi-Fi so that you can have your controller further away. The screen itself, being a single screen, is really easy to navigate with only five buttons that you have to master. It's multiple zone, each run can go up to 240 minutes, you can set seven days a week, you can run your time in either 24 hour or 12 hour time, and to be honest with you, I haven't found a controller on the market that's easier to use. So there we go, we've got our irrigation on and running and it's automatically controlled from the bore where the manifold and everything else is to keep things neat and tidy. We've spent a lot on the irrigation system, but then again, we've spent a lot on the vines. So it pays to make sure that you have a good, reliable water source, particularly in the first couple of years of establishment. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this takes off now. Let me know in the comments section what you think. Please do hit that little red button down there and subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of stuff. You've got no idea how much that helps out. Until next time, catch you later, guys.